right, get out, Buster. Come on, kid, move! Who are you? What do you want? All right, take it easy. Nobody will get hurt. You just want Sonny Boy. Get as money you want here, all I have. Shut up! Where are you taking me? Don't, please don't hurt him. Call it? Don't want it, they'll shoot him. Now you're talking sense, Junior. Please, let him go. Oh, sure we will. Later. Mother, Dad, do exactly as they say. Now listen good. You go home, Rosen, stay close to your telephone. You'll hear from us. And when you get the word, you do just what you're told. Or you're seeing your kid for the last time. I'll do whatever you say. All right, get in the car. During those lawless years of the terrible 20s, the years of the gangster and the gunman, we cops had one headache that had nothing to do with hoodlums. We had a problem with the nice people. People in high society who thought it was smart to be seen in public with characters the police knew to be notorious criminals. Important people who seemed to get a kick out of hobnobbing with the underworld. People like this boy, Sonny Rosen. The son of multi-millionaire parents. His parents were solid citizens. But Sonny was a, a playboy, a character right out of F. Scott Fitzgerald. I got to know Sonny and his parents real well, in the line of duty, of course. My name's Barney Ruditsky, 20 years on the gangster squad, police department, city of New York. The call from Maya Rosen came through at 3.30 in the afternoon of November 19th, 1930. We learned that the Rosens had been driving into town from their Westchester house when the kidnapping took place. My partner, Max Fields, and I entered the Rosen home secretly. We arranged with the phone company to rig us a special line that would permit us to trace any call to the Rosen number. I am, maybe you made a mistake calling the police. Now, Sarah, believe me, I did right. Mr. Roditsky. You did exactly right, Mr. Rosen. But if they find out about it, they might hurt Sonny, do something terrible to him. Don't worry, Mrs. Rosen. We were very careful. No one saw us come in here. How's it, Ken? All right? It works. Good. I'm sorry. I just can't think about anything but Sonny. That's all I'm thinking of, Mrs. Rosen. Sonny and you. You understand, Sergeant. Arresting those men is of no importance to me. I'll do anything to get Sonny back. Pay anything. Well, the police won't interfere. If you want to pay ransom, we'll even help you to pay it. Oh, thank you. You hear that, Mama. But to help you, Mr. Rosen, we have to know exactly what's going on. Not only for Sonny's protection, but for yours. Yes. Now, try to think clearly, please. You say there were three of them and they had these stocking masks on their faces, hmm? Yes. And when they, they came to the car to take Sonny, did they call each other by name? No, I don't think so. I'm sure they didn't. <laughs> Mama, please, why don't you go upstairs and try to get a little rest? <laughs> rest? What about their appearance, Mr. Rosen? Were they big or little? Uh, please. My wife, I can't. No more now. I'm sorry, Mr. Rosen, but we have to ask some questions. I know. May I call the doctor for my wife? Yes, of course. Excuse me. Yes? We're all set on this end, Sergeant. Good. The call may come through any minute now. We've got to make a trace on the first try. The minute you flash the signal, you'll get action. Right. Try to stall. Give us all the time you can. That's for sure. Well, I think we're all set to... Try and trace the call if and when it comes, Mr. Rosen. If it comes? Well, that's something you're going to have to face too, Mrs. Rosen. It may never come. Oh, God. When the phone rings, you'll answer it. 
If it's the kidnappers, stall them. Do anything you can to keep them on the line. Give us all the time possible to try and trace the call, you understand? Oh, and one other thing. Insist on talking to Sonny. Try and make them put him on the phone. Do you understand? Suppose I can't find words, won't know what to say. Well, they'll expect you to be upset. If you aren't, they'd be suspicious. Why don't you try and see if you can't get Mrs. Rosen to get a little rest? And... Maybe a long wait. Thank you for your kindness. I, I know I can't help you. I only wish I could. You're doing just fine, Mrs. Rosen. Thank It was a long wait. The call came through at five in the morning. Hello. Rosen? Yes. What's the matter? You're up late. Couldn't sleep. I don't hear you so good. Well, you better get it right the first time if you want to see that kid of yours again. I, I'm a little nervous. You'll excuse it, please. You've got nothing to be scared of if you play it smart. I understand. Now, you get yourself a hundred thousand dollars in small old bills. Nothing bigger than a twenty, understand? Yes. Yes. It will take some time. Are you trying to stall me, Rosen? No. No. What do I do with the money? Keep it right with you. We'll call you again, maybe. Wait, I want to speak to my son. Are you out of your mind? Before I pay the money, I want to know that my son is alive and well. Are you the kind of a what, what you said, sucker, who would take a chance on losing so much money? I can't promise nothing. I'll see what I can do. Phone booth. Lobby of the Hotel Henry, 54th, just off Broadway. Hotel lobby. He's nothing. Could be anybody walking in and out of that phone booth. Yeah. What are you going to do? We wasted this much time. We're right back where we started. No, no, we haven't wasted any time, Mr. Rosen. We're doing the best we can. At least we got a phone. No, we can't send it. I can't. No more. Come on, Mr. Rosen. You don't great. Oh, yes, Sonny. Thank God. Are you all right? A second call. Get on it. Hurry. Please, Dad. Do what they want and don't tell anybody. Do you understand? Nobody. Or they'll kill me. Yes. Yes, I will, Sonny. Don't worry. I'll do everything just as they say. Goodbye, Dad. Did you get anything? Okay. No dice. That call was too short to trace it. The only thing they know, it didn't come from the same phone in the lobby of the Henry. Well, if it wasn't the same phone, it was one awful close to it. In a kidnapping case, a cop has the life of the victim in his hands. We couldn't go barging into the Hotel Henry asking questions about the phone call we traced to the booth in the lobby, even if it was our only lead. <laughs> From inside the truck, a photographic record was made of every person who passed in or out of that hotel. 
And in a hotel room across the street, we set up a stakeout, commanding the front windows of the Hotel Henry. Anything? No, everything seems to be all right to me. Except those people on the third floor across the way must be sun dodgers. Nice day like this, they don't even raise the shades. Yeah, they must be show people. They sleep all well, day. Lucky them. 24 hours passed with no further word from the kidnappers. Like that guy? Yeah, it was Bo Scalzi, a muscle for Fats Brady. It's all right. What's he doing around the Hotel Henry? Slumming? Yeah, I didn't think Fats or any of his boys would be caught dead in a flea bag like that. I'm gonna put a tail on that baby right away. A cop is just as smart as his information. And he gets most of it from characters like Louis the Gimp. Hello, Mr. Reditsky. Hello, Mr. Fields. Hi, Gimp. Hi, villain. Oh, we're not too good, Mr. Raditsky. Like usual. Hmm? Oh, yeah, aches and pains all over. You know, and it, it looks like a guy can never get yeah, the yeah, feeling Yeah, 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 sure, we know. <laughs> what, uh, what makes you think I'd be interested in anything about Sonny Rosen? Well, a, a guy hears things uh, along the street, you know. Like what? Well, like a snatch, maybe, and then he puts two and two together and... Comes up with 17, huh? You know better than me what you're interested in, Mr. Fields? Go on, Gimp. Well, like I said, things have been kind of rough on me lately, and... Um, a fin, maybe? Fin for what? Well, I hear that young Rosen's got Fats Brady on the cuff for 50 grand, see? And last week, Fats wants to get paid off. Otherwise, the playboy gets the full treatment for Welch's. You know, the kid just uh, was hard luck on a, on the GGs and a, and a couple of hot crap games. He gave Fats Brady his markers? Yeah, that's the way I hear it. You buy it, Mike? No. I don't know. Well, you know I don't deal in any phony information, Mr. Fields. Well, from the gimp, I guess I buy it. Uh, is it worth a fin? Oh, come on. Come on, gimp. Why? What do you think I... An expense account or something? Thank you, Mr. Radetzky. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, uh, Gimp, you, uh, you better leave first, huh? You know, it might ruin your reputation if anybody saw you with a couple of cups. Yeah, any time, Mr. Radetzky, any time. film we shot. Bo Scalzi going into the Hotel Henry. Phone call from the booth in the lobby, how quick they were able to put Sonny Rosen on and make another call. All ties in, doesn't it? Yeah. I think it kind of stinks, too. Another 24 hours passed with no word from the kidnappers for the delivery of the ransom. Rosen had the $100,000 ready. Mrs. Rosen had collapsed from the strain. Kidnapping. Champagne in a floor show? You're right, Max. It stinks. We didn't disclose to Mr. Rosen our knowledge of his son's gambling debts to Fats Brady. That would have broken him up completely. No call yet? No. Nothing. 
How's Mrs. Rosen? Bad. Her heart. She can't stand much more. The doctor's with her now. Do you think it might help Mr. Rosen if, if I were to talk to her? Oh, please do. Anything to help her. Right. Mr. Roditsky is here. Oh, Mrs. Rosen. Remember me? Yes. You're the police officer. That's right. How you feel, huh? You have news. Something about Sonny. Tell me. Well, no, not news exactly, but we are making progress. Oh. Progress. That's what the police always say when they want to fool people, isn't it? And no. Sometimes we say it to try and fool the criminal. Don't deceive me. I've been lying here trying to force myself to face the truth. But I'll never see Sonny again, even if we do pay the money. Well, that isn't true, Mrs. Rosen. You, you mustn't think that. I've been remembering all the cases of kidnapping I've read about in the newspapers. How many do you remember when the victim was returned unharmed? Mrs. Rosen, I can honestly say, believe me, I think Sonny's going to be returned very much alive and well. I'd be willing to guarantee it. Thank you for trying to give me hope. But I've resigned myself to the terrible truth that I'll never see my son again. Alive. Or dead. from the kidnappers with instructions for the delivery of the ransom money came through at 4.30 p.m. Oh, please, Mr. Rodisky, don't interfere. Let me pay them the money and get this over with. No, I don't want you to pay them. I want you to do just exactly as they told you. But you're tampering with the money. They told me I wasn't even to keep a record of the numbers on the bills. If they find out... If they keep their word, we'll have your boy back before they can possibly find out. If they don't... This is our only chance of catching up with them. It's just a kind of a phosphorescent powder, Mr. Rosen. It's completely invisible except under ultraviolet light, but whoever handles this money is going to get some on his fingers and it doesn't wash off. Please trust us, Mr. Rosen, for your own protection. Do you think they might not keep their word? They're criminals, Mr. Rosen. Every one of them. <laughs> The kidnappers instructed Rosen to wrap the money in the smallest possible package and to leave it in an areaway behind these buildings, not later than 11.20 p.m. I had a floating tail on Rosen, and Max Fields and I had the entire scene under surveillance.
Max and I, sure in our minds as to where he would take the money, returned to our stakeout. The minute Scalzi walked into the hotel with the loot, I sewed the place up tight. But we didn't move in. There's that boy. Fats Brady. He was a cinch to come to the party. Let's go. Here's what I owe you. Fifty thousand. And here's your share. Ten thousand. I gotta get a bigger cut. We took all the risk. What risk? Honey, we're rich again. Listen, you chiseling little... I guess you didn't hear the knock. How do you use the passkey? Away from the table, over here, all of you. Move! If you're the police, thank God you found me. Why, we've known where you were for some time, Sonny. Well, I don't know what this is about. I got a call from the chump a little while ago to come by here and pick up some dough he owes me. I know, 50 G's. He's a liar! Give me an out, Rudinsky, and I'll level with you. The punk can't go to his old man for that kind of money, so he rigs this whole deal to get it. A hundred thousand? What he does with the extra 50 G's is his business. Oh, don't listen to him. He threatened to kill me if I didn't pay him. Well, you didn't seem very scared and we busted in here. You all looked like one big happy family. Conspiracy to commit kidnapping. Extortion from your own father. Kid, you're dead. That's Brady's word against mine. And he's a hoodlum and a crook. I'll testify against him. And against those two gorillas of his. Not me, you won't, you little rat. I don't take a fall to save your dirty neck! <laughs> Don't take it so big, kid. Looks like he missed you. I want a lawyer. My father's not gonna let me go to prison. Let's get out of here. I need a bath. Hello, Rodeski. Ah, oh, no, everything's under control. Oh, uh, tell him to send over a wagon, huh? And an ambulance. We just got a sudden stiff. Yeah, what? Oh. I'm oh, sorry to hear that. Right. Got some bad news for you, Sonny. Your mother just passed away. Her heart gave out. Well, don't look at me like that, as if I killed her. <laughs> you killed her, all right. Just as sure as if you put a bullet in her heart. And if I can tie up her debt with that blood money, Sonny, you're going to the chair. Come on. Come on, Al. Don't let him get away. 